So let's transition to what happens after PARP. Uh, most patients do recur, except in the solo one setting, uh, after a PARP inhibitor. What's kind of your go-to regimen after a PARP inhibitor? So, um, because just like you, I believe in platinum sensitivity is a biomarker, um, I usually go back to a platinum um, to see if they will again have a response. You, you know, I've, I've always, always been taught that platinum is the most important agent, and now we're teaching that, that the response is, is a very important biomarker. I've been uh, impressed that the medical oncologists are not quite as indoctrinated with the platinum over and over treatment. I think that's an, an important point. Absolutely. How about PARP after PARPs, Katie? PARP after PARP is the next, you, you mentioned the elephant in the room. PARP after PARP is the next elephant in the room. Uh, with solo one and patients doing very well, I hope many of them are cured, but some of them are going to recur. And they may recur remote from their PARP, and they may respond to a platinum again. And so would you retreat them with a PARP for maintenance? I think I would. Uh, we don't have data for that yet. The Oreo trial with Olaparib is ongoing, and that will be, and that is looking at that exact question in both BRCA and BRCA wild type, interestingly. Uh, and so we'll help uh, inform some of that question. There are other studies just launching, uh, looking at that question and looking at uh, even specifically patients who progressed on PARP and then retreatment. So, so would I use it? Yes. Um, would I like to have data about that? Yes, I would. So I think it's coming. But Brian, I think you'd agree that if you progress on a PARP inhibitor, it's probably not going to work later, right? No, not, I wouldn't say that necessarily. Okay. There was, was, I believe your group had presented some data this year, this year, looking at PARP after PARP inhibition. And I think there were some in those patients that were previously treated with a PARP. And I don't mean to present your data. It's, That's right. it's, you know better than I do. But in those patients that received a PARP, progressed, and then were retreated with a PARP, there were some responders. But they were rare. So but in they, our data, it was patients who had been exposed to a PARP during frontline therapy, all of them, not progressed on a PARP. Yeah, so they got their set number of cycles, okay. progressed remotely from the PARP, got retreated with the PARP, and, and responded. Yeah, I get asked all the time, well, if I, if I you know, progress on a lap rib, since maybe niraparib is a stronger PARP, can I switch? And it's probably not going to work. I think it depends how long they responded to the initial, original yeah, PARP. Okay. Were they on the full dose? Were their side effects that limited the full, the full dose they were able to tolerate? I mean, anecdotally, we certainly see women who, again, respond to a PARP once you confirm that they're platinum sensitive again. Right. Yeah. And the combinations may, right. once we work out modes of platinum resistance, you may progress on a PARP and then you respond beautifully to platinum again and you need PARP plus a PA3 kinase inhibitor, or you need PARP yeah. plus an antiangiogenic inhibitor. And so we're doing those studies. So I think we're going to see PARP after PARP. It may not be monotherapy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. It, it needs to be investigated. I'm not going to do it in my practice now. It needs to be investigated. But you know, I, I wouldn't throw it away. You know, I think there, there may be some subset of patients, as Kate is alluding to, that will respond. Thank, thank you for that summary, Brian.